Hi, this is your host Swapnil Bharti on behalf of the Linux Foundation. And today we have with us once again, Kate Stewart, VP of Dependable Embedded Systems at the Linux Foundation. Kate, it's great to have you back on the show. Great to be talking to you again. Today we're going to talk about SPDX. Uh, just for our viewers, tell us what is it about? So SPDX um, is an acronym that's short for um, Software Package Data Exchange. And this is a um, way of expressing data about metadata about software right now. Um, and the project started about 10 years ago. Um, and so we've been slowly and surely evolving it based on the use cases of what people need to um, and want to share about software. It initially started from the licensing side, and so it's been pretty heavy on that. But obviously, in the last five years, we've been linking into other um, applications like security. People want to share information about security about things. And so the uh, specification that came out uh, last year also had recognition recognition for like global identifiers, like um, the software heritage IDs, as well as it's always had for several years now. It's had the CPEs, um, which are sort of a way of referring to vulnerabilities, and then the pearls and so forth. So we're trying to be inclusive of being able to let people um, understand what the metadata is, and then what the relationships are between packages. Like what are the dependencies? Because you got a vulnerability, what you want to be able to do is understand um, what is the uh, implications of it. And, oh, hey, I'm depending on this library buried down, oh, you know, 20 dependencies deep in this container and this container. You need some way of being able to identify it. So SPDX is a way of summarizing, you know, the um, components and the relationships between them, as well as, quite frankly, if you need to, the source. And what license, you know, which sources form which packages, and what snippets are in the packages in the sources as well. Yeah, if you look at today's modern software development, it's um, uh, you mentioned already, security can is a big ch uh, challenge. Compliance is a big challenge. Uh, so when we look at it, it becomes more or less like a supply chain, or you know, uh, a kind of uh, bill of materials in, in context of software. So because when companies consume, in most cases. Uh, they may not even know what are the components in there. So pulling all the information, what license is being used. So talk about when we do talk about, in, in, in traditional world or early days, I love to call it, when it was all proprietary, you just get for one vendor, that's your done. Now you're pulling in for things from so many different sources. So talk about the role that SPDX is playing in helping companies uh, leverage all these open source technologies without having to worry about uh, what goes in what. Like I say, when, when you ship something, you have a license terms with someone else, you're assuming responsibility. And the challenge is that 90%, based on some of the Black Duck surveys, I think from last year, 90% of products have open source in them. And so you, when you're shipping a, your product, are assuming responsibility for what was in that open source. And um, right now, it tends to be an archeological expedition to try to figure out all these little pieces that one needs to um, encapsulate. So we need to automate, okay? We've got a lot of things automated. This is the thing that needs to be automated. We need to get this working at scale and we need to make it accessible so that like anyone in the open source community, when they're summarizing their licensing for their packages, for instance, or for what they're doing, um, can get an accurate picture pretty much quickly or automatically. And that's missing today. So there's a lot of you know, initiatives that are part of this to try to take it so that we can actually automate these things. One of the projects I'm really quite excited about is, you know, Zephyr has now started to create a software bill of materials of this, you know, when they're putting out their release. And we're we've got some prototypes going on um, and pull requests and so forth to summarize. And when you actually build your binary, pull in all the pieces you need at, down to the file level so you have the accurate licensing. Because that's where you're going to look to figure out if you've got vulnerability or not. A lot of people just want to work at the component level, but sometimes the file level is really needed. And so Making this all automated and transparent for the upstream open source developers is what we're really trying to go after here. What kind of adoption is there or how organizations, projects are embracing it? How easy it is also for them to just, you know, leverage it for, uh, to get the whole stack of what they're running? Like I say, we've got, we've got a huge ecosystem in open source and products here. And so we've got to sort of tackle it from multiple ways simultaneously. We've actually had Fair amount of adoption. Intel, ARM, some of the larger silicon vendors are all have been adopting it for several years. We've got like you know um, Hitachi, Fujitsu, and a variety of other companies in Japan that have been working with it in their supply chains. 
Um, we've got you know groups who are looking at certain use cases and starting to mandate it as part of their procurement requirements, um, so that when they get the data, you know, they get a product and they get the right metadata so that their system can absorb it. So they all have their different ways of implementing it. Um, what we're trying to do in the project is make sure that there's tooling to support them, ingesting it, and you know, exporting it, um, and getting that to the thing there, as well as you know, obviously working with the upstream communities to make sure we have a good solid starting point. Excellent. Now let's talk about anything new that's going on within the community or with the project. Yeah, there's there's a lot of new stuff that's going on right now. Um, one of the things we're, that should be coming out later this year is uh, we should actually formally be an ISO specification. Um, we've been working behind the scenes for the last 221 release that came out last year to take it through ISO so that it's easier for the procurement people to specify and adopt. Um, that's work in progress and the balloting has completed now and it's approved from the balloting, so it'll be a while, but we should be hopefully seeing an ISO number showing up with SPDX this fall. Uh, the other thing that's going on in parallel right now is we are working with some other communities, in particular the OMG community, um, has it had an initial sort of a parallel effort going on for looking at something called 3T, you know, tool to tool and looking at automation as well. So they, they're kind of focusing on the same problem. So we've sort of been working on getting these two communities to work together in the SPDX framework and then moving it forward from there. So the, this 3.0 version of the specification, which will be the next version, we're going to be refactoring it to make it easier for, if you don't care about licensing stuff, you don't have to carry the licensing fields. If you don't care about security, you don't have to carry the security fields. So there's a lot of really good active work going on and people are welcome to join in if they've got use cases they want to know how to re represent. There's other efforts that are working on creating software bill materials or SBOMs. And um, there's a group working in the NTIA that is trying to make sure that there's awareness of SBOMs growing. And SPDX is recognized as one of the formats in there um, for being able to represent an SBOM amongst others. So. Uh, what we're trying to do, and they're trying not to hard, they're trying really hard not to pick winners, so <laughs> so to speak. But we're, we're trying to make sure that any sort of guidance they come up with, we're trying to align with. Kate, thank you so much for talking about SPDX and also this uh, latest release, uh, not really release, but latest development, which is with ISO. Before we wrap this up, just just a quick, you know, uh, uh, really cl closing thoughts from you. What would this, you know, mean for for not only the community but industry also when it gets the ISO mark there as well? It is more about the confidence, or is it about more visibility uh, or reach. So it's, talk it's about it. It's more about visibility and reach. We've gotten the ISO mark now for Open Chain, which says how to use an open source in your organization, and so SPDX is following along on that path, and so that we have okay, you're supposed to use an SBOM according to Open Chain. Well, here's an SBOM format that you know we know people are using and has been adopted by the industry already. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure as always.